The first thing you mentioned, however, was the quantum flow processor, and that's what I wanted to focus on. Jimmy Ray's lighting up like a Christmas tree over here. Um, Walk us through what that means, because I, first of all, it blew my mind. And Jimmy Ray, you had this was that you've actually been talking about this for a while. Yeah, this router's well, well. been in customer networks, but you had mentioned this early on, Jimmy Ray, as being um, uh, uh, quite amazing because it was just different to think of a company like ours using something other than merchant silicon. I mean, the fact that we spun our own, and I'm like, do you build these things in your garage? What did you do? How does that <laughs> kind of thing come about? And how do you begin explaining that? Do you mind? I'll, I'll let you two walk us through it, but I want to hear more details. Okay. Well, certainly. Um I think it, it, it comes from the realization that modern routers and modern networks need very fast, high bandwidth, high packet per second, high services in their data plane. And, and certainly it's very uh, expensive to, to develop this kind of technology. Right. Um, uh, well, let's get down to brass tacks here though. I mean, we're talking about um, a proc. I mean, let's, let's get to the real technical stuff. Hold on, this you know a, what, I just, remember, I just remembered that we, we were supposed to have a, have a proc on set. I thought you had it with you. I don't have it, I thought you had it. No, this is kind of stuff we need to plan ahead. Um, but, uh oh, I think it's coming in now. <laughs> just, just get fabbed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Wow. Appreciate it. It's taking that swine flu thing seriously. Well, it's still warm, too. Yeah. <laughs> Straight out of the fat cake. Okay. <laughs> all right. All seriousness, though, what makes this thing special? I mean, how do you how do you begin explaining something like that? Because it, it fascinates me. Right, because this is the thing that, that, that when, when this first kind of came out, I mean, there was press about this proc before it even was announced uh, anywhere else. I mean, there, in the network world, there was called the mystery processor. Yes. And, uh, and, and you know, th and then when I, I heard it was a, a, a 90 nanometer uh, proc, I was like, yeah, that, that's, I'm like, well, that's not ours. That's probably Suns Niagara. You know, it was the very <laughs> first thing I thought of. Mm -hmm. But it's not. I mean, there's quite a few, there's, this is a, uh, this is a multi-core processor. You got what? Forty cores? Yes, there's uh, forty cores inside of the QFP. They're they're soft. They run regular software that's written in a high-level language. Each of those processors Wait a minute, is no, because that's, see, no, that's 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 not that's not right. Because well, is it, it for you? You you, you can't look because anytime we write procs, you had to write them in assembly. And you're saying uh, it's wrote in something other than assembly? Uh, in prior generations, to get the speed. Um, uh, a lot of the features would be implemented in, in assembly, but the downside of that is the software becomes very complex, it's oh, yeah. very hard to add features That's and right. whatever. So on the QFP, we, as a goal, we wanted to be able to write the software in a high level language so that it's easier to debug, it's quicker to write, quicker to test. Um, to do that, you need a more powerful engine. So from the, from the grounds up, we, we designed into the QFP the silicon power and the processing power to take into account the fact that we were going to use a high-level language, we we're going to use a C compiler and a debugger. ANSI C, huh? ANSI C. So Very that cool. that allows us to uh, to implement features quicker, uh, to be able to test them, and basically produce a more reliable uh, uh, product and software release uh, to the customer base. Now, see, here's what you got to help me with because any time that I've been, I've been involved in a little bit of ASIC rolling, and and one of the things that that we always had a problem with with, with multiprocessors was cache coherency. Yes. And uh, and, and the more and, and what cache coherency means is that basically if, if if I've got proc one and it's writing to the cache in memory location X and proc two and it's also writing to the cache in memory location X but its data is X two I don't want this one to read that data and this one is to, to read another data so we use another protocol. Uh, called uh, well, we always called it uh, Illinois because mm -hmm. it was it developed at Urbana. What's a MISA, right? MISA is, the, is, is actually the, the acronym of what it is. But we don't. How did you guys solve cache coherency with 40 procs? I mean, 40 cores. Certainly, there's there are two two aspects to that. Uh, the first is that just in in the hardware, the the caches are coherent, so the the software doesn't have to. Uh, explicitly worry about accessing stale data or, or data that's been written by a, uh, a separate uh, processor or a separate thread actually because each of the 40 processors uh, has four concurrent threads of execution inside of it so it's really that's where the the equivalent of 160 7200 uh, routers comes from uh, inside the QFP it's actually operating on up to 160 packets at the same time so the, the first yeah, aspect so. of that is the, simply the coherent caches. The second aspect is the flow management logic that is inside the device. Certainly, when you have um, uh, that many processors working in parallel, one of the things you have to worry about is actually getting packets out of order. Um, Absolutely. The, the packets, has to, they have to leave the router in the same order that they, they came. 
Um, the QFP has some very sophisticated flow management hardware inside of it where the packets are tagged and, and stamped so that the device knows which was actually packet one and which was packet two, and then on the way out, those packets are reordered to make sure they come out in the, in the same order. Yeah, but as you're passing these packets through, maybe we're going to talk about this in the, in the software side of it, my understanding is you're passing whole packets, not just headers. That's also true, yes. So, I mean, I, now I understand that in, in the CRS because of the way it does tree lookups. How are we doing, how are we doing that in this? Because I'm still trying to put this, because this just sounds just so... Well, certainly in, I, in, in previous generations, to, to uh, minimize memory bandwidth and to increase the performance, the devices would only operate on the headers, they'd only have access to the headers, well, yeah, right. which is a, a nice thing to make something go fast. The downside is if you've got uh, features that require the whole body of the packet, mm -hmm. uh, anything from get VPN or IPsec, um, uh, content-based routing, and you know, there's a multitude of features that require access to you know more of the packet, the header, the body, the tail, and whatever. And as as a matter of, of policy, we wanted the QFP and the and the ASR one thousand to be able to do those services and those features in the data plane without adding service cards, without adding any extra hardware and what have you. So the QFP was designed from from the ground up to have enough memory bandwidth and to have enough cache space and whatever, such that each of those processors could access all of the packet um, regardless, you know, so they could do any feature that we wanted, um, and the hardware was designed to to provide the performance and the memory bandwidth to support that. You know, because this here's the thing, you're describing this stuff, and, and I'm, I'm like, so then which came first? It's like chicken or the egg. Did you write the software and say to run this software, I need to have this type of proc, or did you write the processor pair and you say, okay? Now I wrote this to, to make this optimized, I need to write this type of software, which, which, because we're really talking about something completely different here. Yeah, I, I would say that we, we took a, a system and, and software feature perspective first. We said, well, we want to be able to build you know, these kinds of systems with these kind of scale points, price performance coin, points, and over time we want to be able to run all of these, you know, that feature set in, in the data plane, everything from um, um, straight forwarding to firewall to NBAR to uh, obviously ACLs and, and all of the security features. And from that starting point, you know, we, we started working on the, the microarchitecture and the design of the, of the QFP and the processors. Uh, we decide, you know, what kind of memories we need, what kind of processors we need, and then what kind of hard-coded silicon accelerators that we need to do some, some very, very well-defined jobs that we know we have to do, like a, an address lookup for IPv4 or IPv6 or whatever. That's a very invariant thing. We know the, the processor has to be able to do that. We know it's not going to change. Right. So we were able to put that right. actually into, into silicon, hard-code that into silicon to get a, a performance boost, but still leave everything else being, being executed in software on the, on the 40 processors inside of the device so that we can, over time, as requirements change, customers' uh, needs change, we can, uh, with just software, uh, adapt the feature set of the, of the system. Was well, it about nine layers, you guys? Nine layers of metal to get this to work? Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a, big, uh, it's a big chip. As you said, it's done in 90 nanometer. I think uh, its gate count is well over a billion. I think it's <laughs> like got eight layers of metal. So it, it's, it's yeah, a, awesome, man. I mean, to put it in perspective, it's a, it's a silicon engineering effort that rivals the industry. It rivals what Sun does, it rivals oh, yeah, what definitely. Intel does. So it's very, very well, here's, advanced here's what I don't custom miss, silicon. And, 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 and I want to make sure, because the producer's going to make me the bad guy in just a moment, because we're running out of time to oh, focus no. on, on the QFP thing here. But I want to make sure that you, we're not missing. What are, the, what are the primary points you want to make sure we get across here before we run out of time and lose Michael's access to this topic? Because I, I don't want to miss segment two. We're going to get into more of the iOS side of things. What would be the primary things you want to make sure we cover here before? Well, I mean, we're, 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 we're a couple things. I mean, I got this, I got this uh, slide uh, up here and stuff and of, of, of some of the, uh, the, the basic logical uh, architecture here. Um, you know, I, I'm just blown away at what we can do inside, inside of the QFP. How are we, how, what's a typical packet flow through this device look like? I mean, we got a bunch of lines here and stuff, but if somebody's wanting to know, okay, how, how does packet flow run through here? How, how would you describe that? 
Um, well, the, the packets come in and, and leave the system through the, the SPAs, the shared port adapters. Yeah. Th those modules are actually common across the ASR1000 and several other platforms, you know, the, the Cisco 10,000, 7600, CRS. So the customer gets great investment protection, their, their modular I.O. cards. Um, packets enter the system through the, through the SPA. Uh, they flow through the carrier card, and then all packets go up to the embedded services processor uh, for either forwarding, um, or if they're control plane packets, if they're TCP or SNMP or whatever, they will be forwarded uh, up to the to the route processor for for that uh, to that, keep state right exactly to keep state yep. and whatever. And the, the nice part about uh, the design is that um, since all packets will flow through the QFP and through the QoS subsystem. The hardware that we have um, in the QFP actually serves to protect the control plane as well. So it really helps to uh, minimize the chance of a denial of service or whatever if someone's using control plane traffic. Oh yeah, definitely, um, definitely. For, for transit traffic, uh, all of the forwarding and processing is done on the, on the um, QFP. Uh, the egress interface is chosen and then the packet flows back through the back plane and then back out to the to the carrier card and then out the egress spa um, you know towards its its actual final destination I really do like the, the idea of having the crypto assist um, over here as well because that obviously gives us uh, especially in the service provider space where we can actually offer some pretty intense services mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of pretty heavy-duty cryptography um, across those services independently without really dragging the box down, which crypto always has yes. the problem of really slowing everything down. Yes, certainly the, the crypto assist uh, makes the scale of the box very good in terms of uh, key generation and number of get VPN or IPsec uh, sessions that the system can support. And then the actual bulk encryption decryption is done by a, a dedicated coprocessor that allows us to go, I think our fastest is up to eight gigabits uh, throughput of, of the box for IPsec traffic with no impact on anything else. And no, no, no other service, no other feature of the box slows down. So that, that's a, a, a very nice um, extension um, um, to these kinds of systems where normally when you turn on uh, an encryption feature, the box will slow down. And yeah, in definitely. The ASR 1000, that's not the case. So. Unbelievable. So let me let me kind of put you on the spot here a second. I, I know I probably shouldn't do this, but if we if we can't, then we'll just do a cut point and then just re-edit it. But uh, in a in a in a back alley fist fight, who would win? The M the M one twenty, ASR one thousand. Um, ASR one thousand, hands down, hands down. Really? Uh, Why do you say that? Because that's man, that's a um, that's a good box, man. I know it's a competitor it, it, box. It, but it is it's, a good it's box. A good box it, is, man. it is a good box, but it's um, the the architecture and design of that box is as you want to add services and features, which everyone does, right? Well, yeah, there's that's, no, that's there's why you no have this vanilla, kind of box. Yeah, exactly. There's no vanilla simply transport networks no, anymore. No way. Everyone is concerned and worried about uh, uh, security. Everyone wants their net flow statistics. Right. Uh, everyone wants various forms of, of bonding, whether it be Ethernet or, or through TDM interfaces or well, whatever. Building and accounting, all that stuff. I Absolutely. Need, if, if I'm going to charge, I need to be able to build Absolutely. back. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and as we move forward, everyone's going to want, uh, you know, things like WebEx acceleration and collaboration features and whatever. And, with uh, the competitor's box, to get all of that, you have to add so many dedicated cards that you consume the system. You, you have no room left in the Very system true. for your Ethernet which defeats ports, its purpose, right? which yeah. defeats your purpose. It also makes the box extremely expensive. I mean, the, the, the service modules that our, our competitors offer, uh, they come with a price tag. They don't come free. No, that's right? true. So uh, it ends up being very, very expensive. So, you know, for, true, true. For, for my dollar, I'd go with the ASR 1000. <laughs> well, clearly teams of almost freakishly brilliant engineers poured their intellectual resources into this thing. It sounds like one I think really that is a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> good. It's a good point. You, I'll in take my it way, such. I have you, conveyed uh, a compliment. That's a valid compliment. You'll get used to it. You do represent a team, and that's a good point, though. That's a very good point.